aftermath of an athletic humiliation on an unprecedented scale. A loss to a tortoise in a foot race so staggering that, his tormentors teased, not only would it live on in record books, but it would transcend sport itself and be taught to children in textbooks and bedtime stories, and that centuries from now, children who had never heard of a tortoise would learn that it was essentially a fancy type of turtle from learning about this very race. The hare retreated, understandably, into a substantial period of depression and self-doubt. The hare gained weight, then lost weight, then turned to religion, then to a less specific religion. The hare got into yoga, shut himself indoors on a self-imposed program to read all the world's great novels, traveled the world, did some volunteer work. Everything helped, a little bit, at first. But nothing really helped. After a while, it became clear what a small part of the hare had known all along. He was going to have to rematch the tortoise. No, came the response from the tortoise's spokesperson. The tortoise prefers to focus on the future, not relive the past. The tortoise is focused full time on inspiring a new generation with the lessons of dedication and persistence through his popular speaking tours and his charitable work with the slow and steady foundation. The smugness and sanctimony of the tortoise's response infuriated the hare. The lessons of dedication and persistence had everyone forgotten that the hare had taken no less than six naps throughout the race, effectively guaranteeing victory to anyone? A horse? A dog? A worm? A leaf, depending on the wind? Anyone lucky enough to be matched up against the hare during this reckless, perspectiveless, and now forever lost peak phase of his career? How could anyone think the tortoise was relevant to any of this? One minor detail, known to few but obsessives, was that there had been a gnat clinging to the tortoise's leg throughout the duration of the contest. Was this gnat, too, worthy of being celebrated as a hero full of counter-logical lessons, like right place, right time, takes no talent in its prime, or hang on to a tortoise's leg, who knows where to lead? No! The lesson of this story had nothing to do with the tortoise, thought the hare, and everything to do with the hare. How he had let himself become so enamored with the aspects of his talent that were rare that he had completely ignored the aspects of his character that were more common and, as it so happened, more important. Things like always doing your best and and never taking success for granted and keeping enough pride burning within you to fuel your success, but not enough to burn it down. Now the hare knew these things. Now, now that it was too late. Or was it? What was that lesson again, slow and steady? The hare began running again every day, even though there was no race plan. He ran a mile every day, then two, then ten. After a while, he added a second run to his routine, a slower one with a different goal in mind. On this run, he made a point of talking to every stranger he passed, saying things like, boy, I sure would love to race that tortoise again. You think anyone would want to watch it, though? Then he'd shrug it off and jog along to the next stranger. Hey, what do you think would happen if I raced that tortoise again? You think I'd win this time or you think pride would get the better of me all over again? Then he'd shrug it off and jog along at a provocatively medium pace. Slowly, steadily, anticipation grew for a tortoise hair rematch. After a while, questions worked their way back to the tortoise. No, came the tortoise's response once again, but this time his no just went to more questions. No, now, no, ever. Would he ever rematch the hare? If not, why? Could he at least say, maybe? No, said the tortoise 
again, never. So people kept asking and he kept saying no until eventually everyone got bored and stopped asking. And it was then sad and dizzy at having had all this attention given to him and then taken away that the tortoise impulsively said, yes, all right, I bet I can beat this hare again, sure. I'm undefeated against the hare, thought the tortoise. In fact, I'm undefeated in my entire racing career. This is good. This will be good. One time, one time, could have been a fluke. Twice, twice, there'll be no question. The race was set for 10 days time, during which the tortoise set out to replicate what seemed to have worked the first time, which was nothing much. Simple diet, some walking around, a little of this, a little of that. He was mostly just going to focus on being slow and steady. The hare trained like no one had ever trained for anything. He ran 15 miles every morning and 15 every afternoon. He watched tapes of his old races. He slept eight hours a night, which is practically unheard of for a hare, and he did it all under a wall, taped full of the mean, vicious things that everyone had said about him after the legendary race that had ruined his life. On the day of the race, the tortoise and the hare met under the starting line and shared a brief, private, conversation as their whole world watched. Good luck, hare, said the tortoise, as casual as ever. And good luck to you, tortoise, said the hare. Oh, and uh, just so you know, I've never told anyone this yet. If you tell me when I said it, I'll deny it, but I'm not really a hare. I'm a rabbit. This wasn't true, the hare just said it to mess with them. On your mark, get set, go! There was a loud bang when the tortoise and the hare both took off from the starting line. Never in the history of competition, athletic or otherwise, human or otherwise, mythical or otherwise, has anyone ever beaten anyone by the order of magnitude that that hare beat that tortoise that afternoon? Within seconds, the hare was in the lead by hundreds of yards. Within minutes, the hare was in the lead by more than a mile. The tortoise crawled on slow and steady, but as he became anxious at having lost sight of his competitor and panicked over what he seemed to have done to his legacy, he started to crawl faster, less slow, less steady. But it hardly mattered. Within 20 minutes of the seven mile race having begun, word worked its way back to the starting line that not only had the hare won the race, and set a time that was a personal best, but he had also set records not only for all leopards, but indeed for all mammals under 20 pounds. When news reached the tortoise, still essentially under the banner of the starting line, he fainted. Those who didn't know the story, who hadn't heard about the first race, never understood what was so important about this one. A tortoise raced a hare and the hare won. Okay, they didn't know the story and so they didn't repeat it and it never became known. But those who were there for both races knew what was so important about what they had witnessed that day. Slow and steady wins the race till truth and talent claim their place.